Good evening. I want to talk to you today about stop going into debt to make others happy. Now, today's episode, I'm going to be talking about two different versions of going into debt to make others happy. I'm going to be talking about the holiday season and going into debt to make others happy. And then we'll segue into actual life in general and trying to go into debt to make others happy. Now, here's what I'm talking about. So, we all know it's the holiday season right now. And so, a few days back, I was at a local big box store. Now, this particular big box store, they sell everything under the sun from lawnmowers to uh, video game console to shower curtains to car tires and everything like that. So I was in that store looking for some gift cards for my family for Christmas. Maybe about 10 years, I've been using gift cards to give to my family members. And the reason that is, is because, like I said, about 10, 11 years ago, I purchased everybody a Christmas gift that they wanted. About time Christmas rolled around, they didn't either want the gift anymore or either they had already purchased the gift. And so they was like, oh man, you got the receipt. So I'm not going to lie, that kind of hurt my feelings a little bit, but it's all right. I was like, you know what, from this point on out, I'm going to be getting everybody in my family, you know, or whatnot, a gift card for Christmas. So that's the reason why I was at this particular big box store a few days ago to buy, you know, a few hundred dollars worth of gift cards for my entire family. Now, I was standing at the cash register getting ready to check out. And right behind me, it was a lady and she had three kids with her. And she was, you know, huffing and puffing. And I kept like looking back at her and, you know, she was, oh, God. And I could tell she was like really upset. So I looked back at her. I said, ma'am, is everything all right? She was like, man, sir, I don't know you from anybody, but you just look like a really nice guy to talk to. I was like, well, yes, ma'am. Is that something I can do to help you? She was like, man, I feel stupid. Like I'm getting ready to spend all of this money for my kids for this new video game console. And in the next two months, they gonna want the new video game console that's about to come out. So I'm getting ready to put myself in all of this debt, sir, to make my kids happy for one day. What would you do if you was me, sir? So I kind of looked at her. I was like, um, all right, uh, that's a really good question, ma'am. Now, do you actually want me to answer that? You want me to be all the way honest with you, like what I would do? And she was like, yes, sir, because I need help. So at this point, I felt like actually compelled to help this lady out. So as we're talking, I'm like, can you actually afford this stuff right here that you're buying for your kids? She was like, no, nah, what I had to do, I had to go out there and take, uh, take a loan out. And then I'm going to use the in-house loan service to pay for this video game console. I was like, now, I want you to think about something, miss. And again, I don't know you. Now, I don't want to, you know, talk too out of turn here or whatnot. But I was like, if you can't afford it, I honestly, especially if you know, ma'am, that your kid is going to want the new video game console, why don't you just wait and then get them the new video game console? That way, it'll give you more time to save your money. And then you can actually come in back into this big box store here and actually pay for it cash opposed to using the in-house loan financing that they just started offering or whatnot. And then she was like, damn, you make a damn good point, sir. You know what? I think that's what I'm going to do. So as we kept talking and whatnot, so now we may be like two or three people or whatnot uh, before we're next in line. So I was like, yes, ma'am. Uh, you know, because see, you're going to have to work a lot harder to pay this stuff back. I said, miss, I want you to think about something. If you go through with purchasing this, yes, you're going to make your kids happy right now. But then in the long run, you and your kids are all going to be unhappy. 
She said, why do you say that? I said, well, the reason I say that is because if you would have used this in-house financing here, you mentioned to me that you only make $7.25 an hour at your job. Now, if you go do the in-house financing for this video game console right here, which is like $800 with all these games and stuff right here, and that's not even including the loan that you told me that you took out for one of those payday advance places that you took out a loan through them so you can buy these other items right here for your kids. Think about it. You're going to have to go out and get another job. And that means your kids are not going to see you. That means you're going to have to go pay some babysitter. You're going to have to pay your mom, your dad, somebody X, Y, Z amount of money to watch your kids for you while you go take on a second job. She was like, damn, you make a really good point. What kind of work do you do for a living, sir? I heard the cashier tell her her total. So her total was still a couple of hundred dollars or whatnot. So she had already took out this loan for these items over here from the payday advance place. So I felt so compelled to help the lady. I gave her a hundred bucks. I'm like, here you go, ma'am. I gave it to the cashier. So here you go, ma'am. You know, just put this on this nice lady's tab right here. You know, the lady was, oh my God, thank you so much, sir. Oh my God, you know, you're a blessed. I like to actually help people. And especially if you are like a really good soul, because I seen this lady, you know, I can tell you she was a really good soul. You know, a uh, uh, single mom of three kids. And so thank goodness that she did talk to me because now I'm pretty sure her and her kids are going to have a really good Christmas. And then she's not going to have as much stress on her to go out and get a job. And that's going to make her stay away from her kids even longer and everything like that. So the kids ain't going to be happy. And then she's not going to be happy. Now, let's get into the second equation of this puzzle right here. Now, stop going into debt to make others happy in life in general. Now, here's what I'm talking about on this one. So, a buddy of mine, I'm going to call him um, Big John. Let's just call him Big John. Big John works down at the plant, okay? Now, Big John, he doesn't have any debt. You know, his house is already paid for um, because his mom had gave it to him and everything like that. So, his house is already paid for. So, he's, he's, he's good on that. So, he didn't have any mortgages or nothing like that, just regular utilities. So, Big John... The particular car he has is really nice. He had, at the particular time, he had like a Tahoe. Real nice Tahoe, has some real nice rims on it and things like that. So Jefferson Street is like a really happening kind of place. So my buddy, Big John, he had cruised down Jefferson Street in his Tahoe. And then he had seen some girls and these girls were like, oh man, you know, that's a busted ass car you got here, dude. So my friend, Big John, the next day, he goes down to the car lot. Now, he currently has no debt. Now, he has a good job at the plant. Now, he'd been at the particular plant he was working at, maybe 10, 11 years. He had a lot of tenure at the plant. So, he goes down to the car dealership and purchases a brand new car to make these girls happy because they told him his Tahoe was ugly. So he went down, not knowing anything about finances, not knowing anything about car notes or nothing like that. All of his cars have been from like tote the note kind of places. He never actually bought from like a like an actual like car dealer, like a big dealership. Next thing you know, he has like a $650 per month car note. He's not thinking about the, the amount of the money for the car note. So he cruising down Jefferson Street. Everybody see him. Oh, Big John, what's up, dog? He pulls back up to the spot where the ladies had told him that his Tahoe was busted at a few days before. Pulls back up to the spot. The same girls was over there. Then he, you know, winds up having a good time with the ladies that, that particular evening. Next thing you know, a week later, Big John goes into work and he gets fired. Well, the reason he got fired was because one of his co-workers had stashed a bag of weed inside of his locker at work and basically set him up. So now Big John got this 600 and something dollar per month car note. Now Big John going back down to the car dealership like, oh man, hey, um, I lost my job, man. Um, you think you can take this car back? The people down at the dealership like, 
No, sir, we're not taking this car back. No, this is your baby. You can sell it or do whatever you need to do with it. But no, we can't take a car back just because you don't want it anymore, just because you lost your job, sir. We gave you this car. This has nothing to do with us. You took the loan out through the middleman. You know, you didn't get the loan through us. We're just a car dealer. You got the loan through the third party loan administrator. So, no, we can't not take this car back because you don't want it. So, Big John was huffing and puffing. He tried to blow the dealership down or whatnot, but they wound up calling security on him and escorting him out of there. Now, Big John, he's basically on the run because the creditors are looking for him now. Now, Big John called me. Hey, Reed. I said, hey, what's up, Big John? He was like, hey, man, you think I could come over there and hide my car in your barn? I said, what? Man, uh, the collection agency and the repo man, they after me. I said, Big John, why the repo man after you, man? You know, you got a good job. You've been at the plant, you know, X, Y, Z amount of years. Why the repo man after you? Oh, man, I, shit, I, I missed around and got fired, man, and somebody put some weed in my locker, man. Read this a long story, man, but can I hide my car over here in your barn? I said, no, nah, big John, you ain't going to run my spot hot, have people come and knock my door down and tear my stuff up. Why did you get into debt like this if you couldn't handle it? Man, I, I seen these girls, man. Oh, oh, my God. Come on, John. Come on, man. Now, when I talked to John, that was the silliest thing I've ever heard in my life. I honestly did not feel bad for my friend. I honestly didn't. I mean, it sounds cruel, what I'm saying. But honestly, I did not feel bad for him because he did that to himself. Now, he had no debt at this moment. His life was going smooth as ice. Again, he know nothing about finance, signed this outrageous loan or whatnot, this 65% interest rate or whatnot. You know, it's going to take him 25 years to pay the car off. Thing is, Big John wound up letting the car get repoed. So now he has all of this stuff on his credit card. His credit record is shot. OK, he can't even get a pack of bubble gum anymore because he don't put himself in so much debt to try to impress some ladies. Now, Big John, we basically the same age. We, we're, we're, we're both in our late 30s. But now I could see if he was 18, 19, 20, you know, even 22 or 25. OK, I could see something like that. But dog, you in your late 30s. You know never to go impress somebody at a red light and get into debt impressing people at a red light who you never going to see again. Yes, he had a good time with those ladies, but look at all the hell that he's going through now. He may have had 10 minutes of fun with the ladies or whatnot. Now he got credit shot, came by a pack of bubble gum. Now basically his life is kind of spiraling down now. Never go into debt to make other people happy. Silly as it may sound, a lot of people do this. A lot of people do this. And then you get to stockpiling up all of this debt. And then you get to wondering, damn, why can't I get ahead in life? Like, why does my life always seem like I'm stuck in second gear? Why does it always seem like I'm spiraling out of control? Well, the reason that you're spiraling out of control nine and a half times out of ten would be because you stockpiled up so much debt on yourself. If you keep putting yourself in all this debt to make kids happy, then imagine how you're going to feel if you still paying for something, the kid done chunked in the corner for the last two years, and you got that on your credit report, and you in collections over a toy that your kid ain't even used. Soon as they took it out the pack, thanks, mom. Next. You know, now you're like, damn, I spent $750 for that Axon Jackson doll over here with the clothes. I spent all this money. Damn, you got the damn doll over here in the closet, flipped upside down, shoes all off the doll, the clothes is all off the doll and stuff like that. Now, your water pump on your Sebring went out. Now, you got to go and get another car, go down to the dealership, run your credit. Oh, you got a repossession on here. Oh, you in collections. Oh. Now you're thinking, shit, I can't get ahead in life. Well, the reason that it appears you can't get ahead in life is because you went into debt to make other people happy. If you like this episode or if you found it useful, please press that like and subscribe button as this actually helps my channel grow. 
And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Until next time, I'll catch you later.